All right, all right, all right, settle down. So today we're going to discuss uh, Nishane Annie, which um, we, we, we touched briefly last night. I'm also going to do that unboxing for you guys since I got a a ton of uh, hashtag whack pack in the comments. You guys obviously want to see what I had picked up. But before I begin, I want to say really quickly, um, in my journey of self-love, in order for me to love myself, I need to love every single one and each of you, which I do tremendously, and I appreciate you guys more than you will ever imagine, including the fellow that called me out in the comments in last night's video pertaining to a certain YouTuber, uh, a certain YouTuber's brand of perfumes and why I haven't given the full disclosure about the lies, the lies behind this brand and what I'm going to do about it if the rumors are true. And why I haven't given the full disclosure is because it's simply not my job and it's not my place and it has nothing to do with me. If it did have anything to do with me, I would have addressed it by now. What am I going to do if uh, the lies are true? I'm not going to do anything about it because I don't care and because I don't believe the lies and the stories and the drama. It just seems like a, a really big fictional conspiracy theory, if I'm honest. Um, but you, since you love drama so much and uh, you feed off that and you thrive from it, probably because you've got nothing else going for you, by all means, go and make your own video. Um, I just think people are really consistent and that brand owner has never really shown me any sort of uh, manipulation or lies in you know the 10 years or so that I've been watching him on YouTube. Uh, I, I don't believe the stories are true. Um, you, you're free to believe whatever you like, but uh, also say want to say like you don't get to define me. I'm not like everybody else, and nobody else is like me. I'm my own person, and only I can define myself. And I know who I am. So, and I proudly stand behind that. Um, but thank you. I love you regardless of what you think. Um, and we'll leave it at that. So let's get into Annie. Uh, I wore Annie today. It's getting a little bit of hype, actually a lot of, of hype. It's, it's quite an interesting and fascinating fragrance and uh, in all kinds of weird and unique sort of ways. I mean, yeah, it smells great and it smells, I, I wouldn't say it's extremely unique, but um, it's very sweet and it's gourmandy. And uh, it's a fun, it's a fun fragrance. It's very uplifting and youthful and, and kind of puts you in good spirits. Uh, it's not very, it's not a very intellectual perfume as in it's going to make you win or it's going to win any kind of Pulitzer Prize, but it's just very fun. And for me, I think what I love most about this is it's transparency, it's weightlessness, as I, I've talked about this before. So to me, Annie, is it's, it's mainly about vanilla. Um, kind of this, dare I say, cheap air freshener vanilla. That's kind of the beauty behind this, is it's got this cheapness to it, this cheap quality. Um, so it's got this very sweet, sugary vanilla, almost... Uh, you know, I, I pick up orange, something orangey, uh, orange, orange flower. There's floral notes in there. Let's call it orange floor, uh, orange flower. And it mixes with that vanilla. So it gives me this, it gives me a orange creamsicle feel and I get lemon in the, in the opening as well. And which reminds me of lemon cake. So there's a lot of gourmand qualities in here. Uh, I also get lavender, a very aromatic lavender, which is probably what's giving this the throw. So there are some fruity notes. There are some sugary vanilla notes. It's very poppy. The vanilla is very swirly. You know, I don't feel it close. I just feel it. I feel this perfume just throwing itself off my skin. Like it, it doesn't want to sit there. It wants to detach 
and whip itself off of me. I can see this being a huge, uh, the next big club banger scent if, if you go to clubs and stuff like that. But there's, there's, there's resins in here. I get uh, a fresh ginger note. I think that's the beauty of this. The beauty to this perfume is not actually the notes or what it smells like. It is the contrast of sensations. So you got a warm vanilla, you have sensual musks, you have a fresh spicy ginger, and you have aromatic herbal lavender. And together these create these very sensual accords that contrast each other and throw themselves off their skin, off, off skin. Like I said, it's not, it's not um, by any means intellectual. It doesn't challenge me in that way. It's very clean, uh, very fresh, very easily worn, very approachable. I can see this being a, a huge mass appealing fragrance, um, compliment getter, attention getter, and that sort of thing. It's just, you know, very easy to wear and very pleasing. I. I I enjoyed wearing it. I have a lot of fun wearing this. You know, it's kind of like fun and goofy at the same time. Like I kind of compared this to a, a top hit in like a number one hit in the top 40 chart. And that's, you know, that's what it reminds me of. Kind of this cheap, goofy, but, you know, fun, entertaining fragrance at the same time. Kind of has kind of this, this fougere quality. I get... I get lavender and, you know, there might be some coumarin in the base to go along with that vanilla, but ferny lavender. I, I, it's a great fragrance, you know, through and through, wonderful, wonderful fragrance, Annie. All right, so let me know what you guys think of Annie. I'm really enjoying it. Let's get to the unboxing. And uh, I, I don't think there's any other reviews on YouTube about this. And this is from the Gucci Alchemist Garden. Okay. And when I first had come across the Alchemist Garden, I was like, hmm, what is this? You like, it's Gucci, it's Alberto Marias. And I didn't know what to, I didn't expect much, to be honest. And then I kind of gave him a sniff and I was like, Okay, these are interesting. You know, I, I love my designer exclusives and they are of a higher quality and the packaging is great. Or is it? I don't know. Like the bottles are beautiful, but the art behind them is it's it's hit and miss depending on what you like. I've got I've got that Chanel oil on my face. Um, the names are weirdish. Um, a voice of the snake. Midnight Stroll, Tears of Iris. This is Tears of Iris. Uh, what else? Eyes of the Tiger. So they're very, oh, they're very animal. Yeah, I, I just, I just figured that out now. They're all kind of animal themed. So, uh, I really like this. Um, Eyes, Tears of Iris. What a weird name, Tears of Iris. I guess because it's such a soft iris fragrance. This is an iris solar floor, and it is all iris. And there is the packaging. It's got that owl on there. So I'm not sure. I like the white, high quality white painted bottles. Um, not sure about all the other artwork. I think it's a little too much going on there. I would have taken away a little bit of this. Um, the cap is, it's not a click. It is a friction, friction cap and it does remind me of the Louis Vuitton bottles. And I kind of compared, I sat last night and I compared this collection to the Louis Vuitton. Um, what I like more about the Gucci is uh, they're all very, they're all unisex. So they didn't have a men's or a women's range, which Louis Vuitton does. So you're forced to buy more fragrances if you're a collector. Um, I think the Louis Vuittons are of a higher quality. They're more interesting. Uh, they feel, you know, uh, better assembled. Uh, 
I do appreciate the Louis Vuittons more, especially the ones where uh, there's comparable categories like the Ouds. And uh, they both have an Oud and they both have an incense base fragrance. Louis Vuitton does not have an iris as uh, at least that's, um, I haven't noticed that they have an iris based perfume, but let's give it a whirl. Actually, let's do this. All right, so very dry, delicate iris. It's soft, it's bready, subtle, warm, earthy, creamy, slightly green, nuanced. There's no sweetness, like just a tad leathery. A tad powdery. I don't get any soapiness. I don't get any roots. I don't get the auras. I get lipstick, waxy, almost like compacty lipstick. Uh, it's a tad spicy. I, I'd call it unisex for sure. But it's just absolutely gorgeous. We unboxed Iris Toreffi uh, last week from Guerlain, and I much more appreciate Tears of Iris uh, and the limited amount of time that I, I've worn it a couple times before I picked it up, and I thought it was absolutely uh, stunning. Appreciated this much more than Iris Toreffi. Uh, but it's just uh, a gorgeous Iris solo floor that really just studies the iris. It's a tad creamy, like as it starts to dry, there's some sandalwood in here and you get that creaminess. But I picture like white florals, creamy, creamy, um, cream colored and white, kind of a combination of cream and white. earthy a little bit mushroomy I get I get fungal from um, iris before I go because you guys uh, showed a lot of appreciation I'm gonna show it right back and I'm going to do one more unboxing and I'm just gonna pick a random perfume here it is from the same collection and this is a midnight stroll. This is Gucci's incense-based uh, perfume. This is the newest release. So they have um, a midnight stroll was released with something nymph, chant of the nymph, with which comes in that really cream. Um, it's almost skin colored. I don't know what you would call that bottle. It's absolutely gorgeous pastel colored bottle. And uh, it's based upon white florals and frangipani. It's a beautiful perfume itself. But, okay, let's, let's have a look here. So that is a midnight stroll. And this is incense based. So how Nuit de Faux from Louis Vuitton is incense based and it is um, more woody incense coming from pine tree and pine sap. This is all church incense. This is black, dark, smoky, dry, Roman Catholic cathedral spicy as all fuck S like this is plumes of smoke it's oh wow yeah this is outrageous i think this is it's 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 cleaner than nuit de faux nuit de faux has got that skank in it from the oud i don't think man there might be some oud in here but it's not dirty oud 
It's just really dry, woody and ambery and tons of smoke. It's like, you know, when you go into the church and they've got that, what is that thing called? Um, somebody remind me and they've got charcoal in there and some incense burning. That's exactly what it reminds me of is church incense. Dry, woody, like dry pews, dry books, dry Bibles. Every This is all church. Just extremely smoky and incense-y. Dry woods. This is all cedar. I don't feel like there's any... It's very sharp. There's no sandalwood in here whatsoever. All sharp edges. A little bit of greenness. Uh, possibly from spices. But just in time, the train is here. And it always does this to me, but... There you go. Check these out. This Gucci line is a lot better than I expected. And, you know, it's better than I gave them credit for. Alberto Marias, Gucci. I wasn't sure what to expect. I was like, mm, but I love the bottles. And I kept, you know, it was the bottles that kept bringing me back. And every time I went in there, I was a little bit fascinated. And, and um, Tears of Iris is the first one that caught my eye. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, there's so many good ones. Uh, they have the EDT collection. They've got the Eau de Parfums, which is this, and they have the Parfum Extracts. I better go, because this train makes a lot of noise. Anyway, drop a comment down below. Love hearing your comments, um, whatever you want to talk about, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.